Today, me and Tuck want to share with you 10 important tasks you need to do in your summer garden. Let's go! Now that the summer heat is here, we need to make sure we're doing the things that will set us up for a healthy, productive garden. One of those important things is to stay on top of harvesting. When it comes to certain fruits, like cucumbers, the more you pick, the more you get. So we need to make sure we're coming out here regularly and picking these fruits. If we allow even just the seed within the fruit of one cucumber to ripen, then the whole vine will quit producing. So if you can see here, we've got a lot more cucumbers coming down the pike. In order to make sure that we keep getting cucumbers, we need to keep grabbing them. Come over here, check out this section. How many cucumbers are down here? So when you think about it, look at that big one down there too, I gotta grab. Fruits like cucumbers, and there's a few others I'll get into, their whole main goal is to produce seed for next year. They wanna produce some offspring. So if we grab these when they're relatively young and small, these cucumbers, then that will make the plant focus on the production of more flowers and more fruits. So basically we're like tricking the fruits to continue to kick out more flowers and more fruit simply by staying on top of picking. Look at them under here. So like this one down here, this one got a little too big. I can harvest it today, but even this one here, I'll grab them when they're this size. They taste so sweet and they're like a better texture in my opinion when they're younger. So don't be afraid to go out and pick your cucumbers when they're young so they continue to produce. This same concept applies to our summer squash as well. If we want them to keep producing, we need to make sure we keep picking. This is for summer squash though, not for winter squash. When it comes to your winter squash, you need those to fully ripen on the vine before you harvest them. And the same concept of the more you pick, the more you get applies to something even like our basil right here. So what we want to do is if you see our ba your basil start to flower, you want to come out here and just pick the top off just like this. What that's going to do is going to promote these two sides, these nodes to grow out in different directions. It's going to make the plant much bushier and it's going to, going to extend the life of your plant by preventing it from flowering. The same goes for our green beans too. If we want our plants to continue flowering like you see here, we want to make sure we're staying on top of picking a lot of these beans. Even grab them when they're small like this. This is when they're so sweet, they're so tasty. And if we want to get big harvests, it's such a simple task to do to make sure we're continually getting more food. What do you think boy? Some green beans? This guy likes snacking on his beans. The dragon tongue beans are his favorite, but he still likes these one. They're pretty good, huh, Boyle? And he moved back up here. Look how many beans are gonna be coming on this one. You've got little baby beans here. You've got flowers. You've got bigger beans. And this is what happens when you plant nine plants in only one square foot. You won't believe how big of a harvest I got from my dragon tongue beans. Just one square foot area. I got a whole bowl full of beans. Uh, there's nothing like getting the most out of the space that you have. Our next task is about getting better fruit production as well. If you have a squash plant or even a cucumber plant, you see the fruit, it's small, then it turns yellow, shrivels up and dies. That's probably because it wasn't properly pollinated. So if you have days where it's relatively cloudy out and you see your flowers open, what you can do to get better production and better pollination is go out there and pollinate it yourself. Because on some of those cloudy rainy days, the bees just might not be very active. If you want, you could take a Q-tip and then find your male flower. So your male flower is going to be this one. It's just, looks like a, a stem and then there's no fruit at the end of it. And your female flower, see this one in here? Your female flower is gonna have the small fruit at the end of it. There's your female flower. There's your small fruit for this white scallop squash. So you can see the difference between the male flower right here. If you want, you could take a Q-tip, dip it into the male flower to get some of the pollen and then bring it over to your female flower. Another thing you can do is you could just take your male flower like this, pop it off and then take this male flower and bring it over to your female flower I'll, I like to first pull off the ends, ends like this, you'll see. Take off some of these leaves, just so you know you can get it in there better. So our pollen's gonna be right at the end of that. You can take this and then go into your female flower. If you come up over the top a little bit, you can just take this and just put it, brush it along your female flower, just like that. We could then take this male flower and go to some of our other squash too. Like if we had some female squash 
on a, a different variety, like over here, we could take this male flower and pollinate some of the other females as well. I don't have any other female flowers right here, that are, about, but you can see some down here about to open, like this one right there. This isn't necessary if you've got some nice sunny days and the bees are out, but it's a good idea if you're gonna have a couple cloudy days in a row, just to make sure you get really good pollination, that will increase your overall yield. As our summer veggies are continuing their healthy growth and production, we need to support them by removing some of the lower growth especially the leaves that may be in contact with the soil. This will prevent disease issues from spreading from the soil into the leaves and up the plant. Removing lower leaves will increase both airflow and light to our plants. Make sure to remove all diseased and damaged leaves. When I go out and prune my cucumbers and my tomatoes too, I make sure that I spray my pruners with some isopropyl alcohol. This way I don't spread disease issues from plant to plant. Also, we want to make sure to continue to maintain our plants as the season progresses, especially our tomatoes by removing some of the suckers, like these ones down here. So this sucker I allowed to grow and then it set fruit right here. Now that it's set its fruit, I'm gonna move up a little bit and just cut this off and then remove this here. This is gonna prevent it from bushing out, but I'm still gonna get that extra bonus harvest from the tomatoes there. As you move up the plant, you'll notice I allowed a couple of suckers to grow. At this time of the year, especially in the south, you want to leave a few suckers growing in the middle of the plant. This will shade out some of the fruit so the fruit doesn't get sun scald, basically sunburn on your tomatoes. Again, this is very important in the south. I've never had too much of an issue with sun scald in my tomatoes, but it's a good idea to leave some of those suckers at the center. As our plants continue to grow up and we remove the majority of the suckers, we want to stay on top of tying our plants to our strings. What this will do is this will evenly distribute the weight of the fruit throughout a bunch of clips and throughout the string. Instead of having the majority of weight of the weight on only one or two clips, this will give us a better, healthier plant that when it gets really heavy, will be able to hold all that fruit. Come around and just take a scan of how much fruit we have on these tomatoes. Look at all these here. It starts over there in the corner. Look at those sets down there. And as we move along, more beautiful ones here, tomatoes down here. And then we continue more this way. A lot of tomatoes, a lot of cherries, but we also have some larger tomatoes. And some are even starting to change color. That's, we're gonna get some tomatoes early in the season this year. And then some of our bigger beef steaks and stuff down here, nice production on these. So when you grow tomatoes like this, not only do you save space, not only do you have less chances of disease issues because you're opening up the center and getting them more light, but also you get amazing harvests and it's just my favorite way to grow tomatoes by far. And I grow my cucumbers basically the same exact way. Now that our plants are either producing or heading into production, we must not only give them physical support, we also need to give them nutritional support and provide them with what they need to give us the biggest harvests possible. To ensure this, we should go around and top dress our plants with some all-purpose fertilizer. And for my tomatoes, I'm also adding in some bone meal fertilizer. This will help with fruit production and flower production, and it will also add a little bit of extra calcium. After I have gone by and top dressed my plants with some fertilizer, I'll go through and mix that fertilizer into the top few inches of the soil. This way, the plants have exactly what they need to be able to continue to produce fruit all season long. After we top dress our plants, we need to make sure we go by and water our plants, but we need to make sure we are only watering at the base. We do not want to get the leaves wet. That creates a breeding ground for disease issues. When we get a rain, the leaves are going to inevitably get wet, but the drier we keep the foliage, the better. The larger your plant and the more fruit it has, the more water it's going to need. So when you have a plant like cucumbers and they're loaded like these are here, I mean, look at all the cucumbers down there too, and the, those ones over there, they're going to need more water. When it comes to plants like cucumbers, if you don't provide them with enough water, then they're gonna get stressed out. And when they get stressed out, they produce a chemical compound known as cucurbitacin. This is what makes the cucumbers bitter, but this is also what draws in the cucumber beetles. So if you don't stay on top of watering with proper watering practices, you're going to be bringing in more disease issues if you get the leaves wet, and then you're going to be bringing in bringing in more pest issues if you allow the fruit to over ripen to get bitter and for the plants to not get enough water. So watering is very important, not only for the shape of your cucumbers 
and the health of your plants, but also to prevent issues. Next, we want to make sure we're getting a mulch down to help the soil retain moisture and to help keep the roots cool. The roots are the foundation of our plants. We need to make sure we're providing them with a good environment so they can grow big, healthy plants. Tomatoes are more likely to crack and split if the soil is really dry and then a big water comes. What we want is our soil to remain consistently moist. We don't want it to be soggy, but we want it to be moist and damp. This will provide our plants with exactly what they need to form fruit that doesn't split and that can reach maturity. You could use whatever kind of mulch you prefer. My two favorite mulches are a diced leaf mulch and a wood chip mulch. This year I went with a wood chip mulch and you can see the plants are performing beautifully. It's been a few weeks since I went by. I pruned the plants, I top dressed them, I watered them and I mulched them and you can see they've never been happier. They're set up for a super productive future. Look at all these plants here. And I'll give you a clip of what the tomatoes look on the other side, the other row. Those ones might even be more loaded than these ones over here. If some of your plants are already being attacked by pests, for instance, if your squash are falling victim to the squash vine borer, there are a few things you could do now to help manage that. One thing you could do is you could come by, I've done this in the past, and actually bury the stem of your squash vine further up from where the squash vine borer has put a larva into your squash and is attacking your plant. So if you bury the vine further up, this will cause the vine to root into the ground and you won't really have the issue of that plant being supported by a root system that has a squash vine larvae attacking from the inside. Another thing you could do is you could inject your plants with BTK. This will kill the larvae inside of your plants. It's not something I've ever done because I never really have had to, but you could do that if you want to. What I have done this year and I do now is I'll spray the base of my plants with surround kale and clay. This seems to prevent the squash vine borer from going in and laying its eggs into my stems and it has made it so I don't have really any squash vine borer damage this year. What I suggest you do, whether or not you have issues with the squash vine borer, is to plant another round of squash right now. You will still have time to get a harvest. Some varieties only take about 60 days from seed to harvest. What this will do is it will allow you to basically avoid the squash vine borer because when your plants start to get a little larger, the squash vine borer will not even be laying eggs really because at this time of the year it kind of stops laying eggs so you'll be able to prevent the issue of the squash vine borer altogether. Also if some of your plants start to get some bad disease issues or they just don't perform as well you'll have backups to replace these plants. This way you'll always have big healthy productive squash to be able to maintain a good harvest. Look at the size of some of these plants. These are looking perfect. They're heading into peak production. Now is the time to get another round planted. The next simple garden task is to go around and remove the fallen fruit and take it off the property. Throw it in the trash, get rid of it. It might not seem very important, but it is. Fallen fruit can harbor both disease and pest issues, especially around here on the East Coast. We have a bug known as the plum curculio. What it does is it cuts into the young fruit and lays eggs inside the fruit. The larvae then feeds on the pit and then the fruit falls to the ground and then that larvae hatches. So by removing this fallen fruit, we're kind of breaking the life cycle of the plum curculio, which is super important. This way in the future, there's less and less. So by removing fallen fruit, not only will it help our garden this, e this year, but it will continue to help our garden for years and years in the future, every year reducing that overall population. Another simple garden task that you need to do right now is to go around, monitor your plants, and check if there's any pests on them. For example, now is the perfect time when the tomato hornworm likes to show up and go after our tomato plants. So scan through your plants when you go out there and if you see any tomato hornworms, remove them. I don't see any on my plants yet, which is great, but if you do see any on yours, you could go around and hit them with BT. This will kill off the tomato hornworms. This is a great spray. It's also organic. Other pests should be showing up around now too, like the cucumber beetles and the squash vine borers. If you have issues with those, you could try to hit them with some neem oil. This one has the azadiracta in it, which is important. It's moderately good for your cucumber beetles and your squash vine borers, but if you want to take like a, the kind of the bomb approach and go really after them, you could hit them with the pyrethrin. 
This one will also damage your beneficial insects, so you want to be careful when using this one. I've never had to result in using it, but it is an option if you want to. Now, you will also start to see some soft-bodied insects show up, especially on some of your cabbages, your kales, your brassicas, like the white flies. So for white flies, I like using the Safer Soap. This is a great option. It kills them off really quickly. But you could also just use the neem oil for the white flies too. So even though the plants are looking good, they're setting up, the harvests are gonna be coming in soon. We need to go out there, we need to monitor our plants, we need to remove any pest issues to make sure that we actually get these tomatoes to reach full maturity. Looks like some fantastic harvests on this one this year. While your summer plants are kicking out harvests and doing well, it's the perfect time to start preparing for your fall garden. You can start ordering some of your seeds, especially something like spinach. When it comes to your spinach, these seeds are really only viable for about a year. So make sure you get some of your fall crops now so you can start planting them. When it comes to some fall crops, like some of your brassicas, those take about like 80 to 100 days for some of them. So it's a perfect time now to start getting those planted so you can be able to replace what you take out, your summer veggies, with some brassicas and you can set yourself up for a fall harvest and even plant some winter hardy greens that could allow you to grow super deep into the year. One simple tool that's made a considerable difference for me and my garden, especially in these hot months like July we're in, is using a shade cloth. This will really help your plants, this 40% shade cloth. It'll reduce the stress on some of your plants when you have these hot, dry days. And it's also really important for starting some of your fall crops if you're going to be starting them outside. You could start them in containers, and then when the summer heat comes, like midday, you would take your shade cloth, drop it over top. This will reduce the stress on those young plants, especially for some of those young brassicas that don't like a lot of heat when they're first getting started. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck hope that we gave you some ideas and encourage you to get out there to put in some work. Even if your garden is performing well right now, it's not about just today. It's about next season. It's about the future harvest. It's about setting yourself up for a better future. Something as simple as removing that fallen fruit will help you considerably in your future to get better, more consistent harvest from your fruit trees. It's a simple task, but it makes a big difference. Me and Tuck wanted to send a thank you to one of our new channel members, Moses Merlin. Thanks for being a part of Team Grow. Thanks for having your hand in everything we're doing out here. We also want to announce the winner of the JP Secret Stuff Fertilizer for the second giveaway. So what I did was I went on Google. I typed in random number generator. I set it between one and 500. I hit generate. It kicked me out the number 229. I went into my email. I typed in JP229 and it looks like the winner is B Irwin4743. You were the first one to guess the right number, and that means you're going to be getting a bag of JP's Secret Stuff Fertilizer. As you can see, the fertilizer works fantastic. Look at the health of some of the plants behind me, and you can see the health of the plants that I've been showing you throughout the video. This spot doesn't even get a lot of light, but it's still cook kicking out a lot of food. And me and Tuck want to encourage you guys to plant even if you doubt that things will grow, get some stuff in the ground. Let nature amaze you. Every day you can come out here and it's just amazing feeling to watch the plants grow, to actually plant the seed, to transplant it, to watch it grow, to grab the fruit, to be part of the whole life cycle of a plant and a whole garden. There's nothing more rewarding. We had a blast out here. We hope you guys in just got a lot from this video. And we also wanted to know if you want us to do another giveaway where we give away some more fertilizer stuff, just let us know down in the comments. I'm sure we could manage to give away some more JP secret stuff because we're trying to get it into as many people's hands as possible. Tuck and James will be back to you again real soon. We out.